Good morning. Today is Thursday, July 18th, 2024. Last Friday, Dr. Ruth Westheimer died at the age of 96 in New York City. Dr. Ruth was born in Germany in 1928. In 1939, just weeks after her father was arrested during Kristallnacht, she was sent to Switzerland on a kinder transport and the rest of her family were murdered in the Holocaust, she never saw her family again. In later years, she used to say, looking at my four grandchildren, Hitler lost and I won. When she was 16 years old, she made her way to Israel, then referred to as Palestine, And several years later, she joined the Haganah. The Haganah was the Jewish fighting force that was the precursor to the IDF, the Israel Defense Force. She trained as a sniper. But she was seriously wounded in the fighting in 1948. Years later, she wrote an op-ed in the New York Times about women serving in combat positions, which she had done so many years earlier. And she said, she wrote, Though I am only four feet seven inches tall, with a gun in my hand, I am the equal of a soldier who's six foot seven, and perhaps even at a slight advantage, as I make a smaller target. In 1980, she was living in New York, And she began hosting a 15-minute radio show that started at midnight. And the title of the show was Sexually Speaking. And her manner, her frank, open discussions, her humor moved her from obscurity to almost instant stardom. And she became probably the world's most well-known sex therapist. In 1985, William Geist was writing an article about her for the New York Times Magazine. And he wrote in that article, She looks for all the world as though she is about to tell us in her cheery German accent how to make a nice apple strudel. But when she opens her mouth, it's code blue in the family room all across the country. She sends forth on radio and television the most explicit instruction in sexual manipulation, stimulation, and satisfaction. That day, on her program, in response to one question, she cautioned Don't let her do that while you're driving. But she always tried to stress respectful relationships and safety, not just the mechanics of intimacy. She met her husband. It was actually her third husband, but it's the husband that she lived with for the most years and with whom she was happiest, Manfred Westheimer. She met him while she was skiing in the Catskills. And many years later, after her husband passed away, she said, Skiers make the best lovers because they don't sit in front of a television like couch potatoes. They take a risk and they wiggle their behinds and they also meet new people on the ski lift. In 2018, she was interviewed by the Times of Israel, and she said, reflecting back on her career of several decades, the specific questions I get have not changed so much. What has changed because of programs like mine is the language. People are willing to speak much more explicitly now 
when they have a question or they have a problem. Dr. Ruth wrote more than a dozen books on this topic, including in 1996, she wrote a book titled Heavenly Sex, Sexuality in the Jewish Tradition. And she said at that time, I believe that I can talk so openly about sex because I am very Jewish. And in the Jewish tradition, sex has never been considered a sin, but always an obligation. And it's an obligation for the husband to satisfy his wife. And that is correct. That is an authentic Jewish teaching. According to the Torah and Jewish law and Jewish thought, the physical intimacy in marriage is meant to be pleasurable, independent of the goal of procreation. There is an incredible story in the Talmud. And often, when people hear it for the first time, they laugh because it seems funny, but it has deep, deep truth to it. The Talmud in Masechta Bracha says, Rav Kahana, Rav Kahana was one of the famous Talmudic rabbis. He's mentioned, I don't know, hundreds of times throughout the Talmud with his Talmud, Talmudic discussions and, and opinions, one of the main characters in the Talmud. One time Rav Kahana entered and lay down underneath the bed of his teacher Rav. Rav was the great teacher and Rav Kahana, his student, went into the bedroom and hid underneath the bed. Shamei, Tesach, Vesachak, Vaasatrachav. He heard Rav and his wife speaking to each other and laughing together and then engaging in physical intimacy. Amar Kahana, Hachaat. At some point, Rav must have uh, realized that there's someone underneath the bed. He says, Kahana, is that you? And he says to his student, Puk, leave, go out. It's not right. It's not Derek Eretz. How? It's it's dis- despicable. How could you hide yourself? Under the, the, the bedroom, in my bedroom? Amale, Rav Kahana said to him, to his Rebbe, Torah he. It's Torah. The Lilmod Ani Tzarech. And it is something that I have to learn. How a husband and wife act together in private is Torah. It's holy. And we have to learn how it should be done correctly according to the Torah's values. Now, please do not emulate Rav Kahana in that particular method of instruction. But the rabbis in the Talmud were very open and detailed about the physical intimacy in marriage. And the normative view that is expressed in the Talmud and codified in the codes and expressed in more contemporary works is that the basic underpinning is that everything is good as long as it is respectful and freely agreed to by both spouses. Dr. Ruth is not an authority in Jewish law. She never claimed to be but her approach is authentically Jewish. In this book, Heavenly Sex, there are a few paragraphs here and there with which I disagree and which I feel do not accurately reflect Jewish law or Jewish thought. A few paragraphs here and there. But overall, It is a traditional Jewish approach, and I recommend it highly. 
In 2015, Dr. Ruth gave a TED Talk. And it was a serious talk. It was a reflective talk. She was talking about different ways to cherish pleasure and to find happiness. And she said, some people are afraid to exhibit joy because they think that if they exhibit joy, that will mean that something bad is going to happen. And she said, take every single aspect of life, significant others, falling in love, having sex, and anything that comes your way, take it with both hands and make the best of it. But no matter how serious Dr. Ruth could be, she always injected her own unique brand of humor. So she said in that talk, you should also stay away from negative people, except if it's your mother-in-law, she said. If it's the mother-in-law, you have no choice. Dr. Ruth Westheimer was a pioneer. And there is much that we, religious Jews, can learn from her. Not everything, but quite a lot. Dr. Ruth Westheimer of Blessed Memory. My friends, I wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.